Hello, and welcome to another PWM Design Studio tutorial. All right, everybody, here it is. The one-time feature that I have been looking forward to in a 3D application for a very long time. Outside of view and Terrigen. So recently with the new update to Corona Render, it was updated to version 7 for Cinema 4D, and they provided their PRG clear sky model in this update, which means that for us Corona Render users in Cinema 4D, we now have access to uh, aerial perspective and height fog for our outdoor scenery, which is awesome because that now diminishes the need for a volume material applied to a cube or a sphere that encompasses our scene, which means that we'll save time on rendering as well as scene prep. Super easy to set up and I'm going to go through with it. Uh, go through it now with you. Okay, so you're going to need a couple things. First, you'll need the new update to Corona Render to Corona Render 7 for Cinema 4D. You'll need the Corona Sun and the Corona Sky object. And uh, next, you'll have to sit down, get some popcorn, and follow along because um, it's not going to take very long to explain any of this stuff because it's super easy. So first things first is I want to show you a before and after. So I'm going to start the Corona IR here. We're going to ignore that message. And this is what we would normally get by default. As you can see here, we have no visual fall off. Everything looks like it's kind of blended together, the foreground and the background, as well as the midground. There's nothing that kind of differentiates between those three steps. With the new PRG Clear Sky model, we can now enable the volume effect, which will give us that perspective. So now we can differentiate between what's close, what's you know in the midground, and what's in the background. And we can exacerbate, exacerbate, wow, I'm not going to try that word again. We can strengthen the effect <laughs> by uh, increasing and decreasing some of the values here. So the first one I'm going to start with is intensity. Um, by default, this is set to 1, and that is almost always too blown out for what I want to do. Um, you can probably play around with it and get better visuals if you want, but I'm going to go to point 2. I think is what I had. Uh, I do like point three as well. Point three is actually not bad. Um, it actually gives really good uh, effect with the PRG model, so I might stick with this point three. Um, next will be the turbidity, altitude, and the volume effect scale. So let me explain what turbidity is because a lot of these um, settings here will actually intermingle with each other, and I'll explain all that then show you. So turbidity is going to be your aerosols, pollutants, water droplets, smoke, haze, whatever it is that's in the atmosphere. The more turbidity you have, the more of that, of those things you have in your, in your atmosphere. And the less turbidity, the less of those things you have in your atmosphere. So if you want a really hazy and overcast kind of day, kind of groggy looking, you would increase your turbidity. And as you can see here with a turbidity of five, we now have this volume uh, being acted upon by the turbidity, making it look really smoky in this case. If you wanted kind of a clear day with really far view distance and just atmosphere between you and the camera, you can re decrease it to 1.7, which is the lowest you can go. And um, that's actually okay because the atmosphere is almost always going to always going to have something in it. It's never really going to be clean. I mean, that's what gives us our view distance. Um, 1.7 might be too small here, so I'm going to go to 2. Um, 2 will allow me to see this mountain range right here a little bit, not too much, uh, just a tad bit. Maybe it's a little bit too intense here, so I'll go to 0. 0.25. There we go, that's a little better. Uh, we can probably go higher, 0. 0.28. Okay, that's good. Um, I just want to make sure that we can see the background mountains, but have the very far away mountains um, kind of not visible because of the, the sun, you know. All right. Now, before I continue with the other settings, I do want to say this is all dependent on scene scale. So this mountain right here I have in the middle, that is one kilometer away from where my camera is. Exactly. I have it set up like that on purpose. To this, cam uh, to this mountain range and this mountain range from my camera is 
two kilometers from where they start. So they're two kilometers away, which means that at any point, there should be more atmosphere between this mountain and this mountain relative to my camera. So with less words, my camera should see more atmosphere between where it's at now and this mountain rather than between where it's at and this mountain, which means that this mountain and this mountain should look further away at any given time, depending on the the settings that I have with the, the volume effect. And that is the case here. <clears throat> These mountains on the side are in line with this mountain. This one's blown out because the sun's there and that's how the atmosphere is working. And if you want to see how I have this set up, I'll go ahead and show you the top view. There we go. That's the plane my mannequin's sitting on. There's that middle mountain. This is one kilometer. It starts one kilometer. This one starts one kilometer. So uh, from here, one, two, three kilometers from here to there, uh, the very back end of these mountain ranges. Okay, so now that we have the scene scale set up, we, uh, we kind of know what we're going to want moving forward. Uh, that has nothing to do with the altitude here. So the altitude is how high up you want your aerial perspective to be. So for example, if you're on Mount Everest, which is 8,848 meters, I believe, uh, is the new measurement for it, I suppose, then you would want to set your altitude to 8,400 and, or 8,848, or whatever the new altitude is. That's what you're gonna wanna set it at, because if you are at the top of Mount Everest rendering a scene of you on top of Mount Everest, you're going to want the aerial perspective to match your altitude. So here, I'm altitude of 8,848. This is what we get with our current settings. Now, keep in mind that the higher the altitude you get, the less atmosphere there is, which means that turbidity will have to be increased if you want more turbidity in your atmosphere. But the more, the higher you get, the less effect turbidity has. And I'll show you that. I keep hitting my mic, so I apologize for that. If I increase this to 15,000, you can see here we have almost no turbidity because there's less atmosphere that it's playing with. I can increase and decrease the turbidity, the max values, and the minimum values all I want. And the max is 5, by the way. I can increase it and de decrease it as much as I want, and there's not going to be a, a lot of change. There will be some change by changing the volume effect. And you have to go really high for it to actually change anything. So 100,000. And from here, you can see the volume effect kicking in. But you can go even higher. I went to 500,000. And there was hardly any change. But if I were to reduce the turbidity, if you keep an eye in this area, you'll actually see a slight change And right there. And it's not really doing anything. So um, there are limitations to this. You're, you're not going to be able to make like space scenes with it. But that's fine because that's not what it's used for. That's not what its main purpose is. It's to give you an atmosphere to work with. Um, but it does go high enough that you can be creative with it. So if you're to go to the highest peak above ground, which is the top of Mount Everest, then 8,848 meters will be the highest you'll need to go. If you wanted to go higher than that, they gave you a lot of buffer room that you can work with. <clears throat> okay. So let's say we're on top of Mount Everest, I have the altitude set, now I just need to increase my turbidity and my uh, volume effect scale here to get the, the look I want. So uh, if I take it down to one, you'll see here that we have like nothing going on. So we gotta increase it to maybe, maybe 10. And we have a little bit of atmosphere kicking in now. Uh, let's go to 100. And now we have more atmosphere kicking in and that might be what you would see at the top of Mount Everest. Maybe. I've never been there. But some of the images I've seen, this is about what it looked like with faraway mountains. And closer mountains would be less atmosphere between them, but you get the point. All right. Uh, where I'm at, though, we are only 1,280 meters above ground. Or above sea level. Not above ground, but above sea level. So uh, this is what I want in my altitude. So this would be me standing where my house is looking towards the Stansberries which these mountains represent. And uh, we have a lot of fog, or not fog, 
a lot of smoke coming in from California because there's fires going on in there and it's blowing all into Utah. So this is literally what I see every day and breathing this sucks. It, I've had throat problems, I've had allergy issues, so on and so forth. And I actually drove through a lot of this when I went on my Pacific Northwest trip just these last couple weeks. Um, it was really thick and dense and this is about what I see waking up looking outside. So um, this is pretty accurate. Now the scale here um, for the volume effect, you can consider this as a multiplier for this volume, this height fog, but it will work in conjunction with your turbidity and altitude. So that's just putting it in layman's terms, because if you have a lower altitude, you'll probably need a lower scale in your volume effect because there's a lot more atmosphere to work with. For instance, if we go to zero, you can see here, that is not good looking. There's a lot of turbidity. The scale factor and the volume effect is really high. So we can reduce the turbidity till we find what we want. We can go even all the way down. But even at this point, you're like, well, you know, we don't have a whole lot going on with the turbidity, but the scale is still too large. Well, now we can reduce this. Let's go to one. Now with a, val val a value of one, you'll say, well, there's nothing going on here. It's, I mean, it's, it's essentially been disabled. Well, it hasn't. Because if you reduce it to zero, there is a major difference. Well, I guess it's not very major. It's, it's subtle, but it's there. So if you just keep an eye, like in the shadowy areas, they'll turn a little bit more of this blue color. So let's go ahead and go back to one. You can see here, it's a very small effect. But if we go to 10, now it's really noticeable. So it's not necessarily a multiplier for the volume effect it will work in conjunction with your turbidity and altitude. So you'll have to finagle the scale values here to get what you want based on your current altitude and your turbidity. And I don't think there's any math that you can really do to get that. It's all just gonna be mostly visual. So um, in this case, I want not as smoky as it is outside right now, but you know, just enough to give it some distance. 50 is probably too much, let's go to 25. 25 is good. Okay, so on a clear day, this might be what I see. Uh, actually, the Stansberries are probably closer to me than, uh, than this. They're also a lot taller than this, so um, this isn't quite the scale, but the distance is what matters. The scale you can, you can finagle with and get right, but the scale needs to be accurate, and the scale is accurate So um, for the scene, the whole scene, not just the mountains. Um, and other than that, there isn't a whole lot else to talk about. It's super easy to set up, doesn't take a whole lot of time. Um, one other thing that you could probably play with is the fake horizon blur. And I want to talk about this really quickly just because it does make a difference and you might need to play around with it. So I don't actually call it the horizon blur. I call it more of the horizon haze or horizon blend. Because what's happening is there's a horizon that's being made here by the sky model and it'll take this color that you have for the ground color and we'll use that color to help blend between the sky and that horizon um, and the lower value you have here the more of this color it'll take on and the higher value you have the less color it'll take on because it's actually blending with the sun color and the atmosphere so you'll actually get a different color altogether you'll actually start getting a little more orange a little more uh, hazy looking so let me increase that to one and you'll see what i'm talking about now if I decrease this to zero, you can see we have a blue tint over everything, and that's because it's taking on this ground color, which is a good thing, but now we have a very sharp horizon. So if you need to have this blue or whatever color you have here in your scene, zero might not be what you want. You might want a small value. I find 0.2 to be good. And just so we can see this a little bit clearer, I'm gonna go ahead and choose a really vibrant green color and now you can see here it's actually taken upon that green color for the ground color. You can actually turn off that effect uh, where the ground is affected by the sky if you wanted. Now it's only really affecting the atmosphere that's between you and the mountains. It's not really affecting the actual mountain objects itself uh, or your ground element. But in any case, um, you have the option there. Now what I like to do is I like to take the color picker and just choose uh, somewhere where it's blue and then turn the vibrancy up and then 20 percent there um, that's about what i like right there i think that gives a good 
uh, overall vis appealing visual. And then for the blur amount, you can use something like 0.2, which is still quite a bit. Now you don't have such a harsh horizon. So if you look like in this area, if I decrease that, you can see how it's very sharp now, rather than being blurred with a little more of that haze. I can go to 0.2 and you can really see that change. See, now it's up here rather than down here. So that looks pretty good. Now, another thing that I mentioned uh, regarding this new method is it doesn't interact with the HDRIs, at least not as directly. There is an effect on the HDRIs, but they blend together between the volume effect and your HDRI a lot better than before. So now instead of having your entire scene encompassed with this volume, you only have your volume affecting from sea level where the sky model starts upwards, which means that if you have an HDRI like this one, give it a minute to load. <clears throat> this is like the 20th time of me recording this video, by the way. I've just been having computer problems. You can see the HDRI is standing out really well, and it's not being affected by our fog. So if I were to turn off the volume effect, you see it does not affect the HDRI, not even towards the horizon. So let me go ahead and reselect that effect. And I'm looking like in this area, in these areas, and in typical areas where you would think the HDRI would, HDRI would be affected if you had a volume encompassing your scene. So with and without. So now you can see here they blend much better, which means that you're going to start be able to use your HDRIs and your, your volumetrics blending together much better than in prior iterations of Corona Render. And you can change these out and be whatever you want. So uh, there's not a whole lot to it. All right, so <clears throat> other than that, there's not a whole lot else to talk about. I don't think I missed anything. Um, if I didn't explain anything really clear for you or you're confused or if you have questions, feel free to put them in the comments section. Um, I also have a link to the Discord there as well. You can join the Discord and you can ask as many questions about pretty much anything 3D related there that you want. And usually somebody will respond or I'll respond. I'm almost always going to respond on the discord probably faster than on youtube comments but i will eventually get to your comment i don't think i've missed any comments at least for a few years now so um hopefully i'll get to it relatively quickly but in any case uh yep just comment below if you have anything that you need to comment on and i'll see you guys in the next video